Hello everybody, do you like my shirt? I bought it in middle school and it still fits. I'm gonna do you a huge favor. I know, I know, I'm an incredible guy. I'm in quarantine, I'm still thinking about you. Saint is a really strong word, but if you wanna use it, I can handle it. So, my first bike, which was a urine-colored Schwinn with a banana seat and these handlebars that went like this, that was my first bike. That bike came with training wheels. Now, we lived in Indiana, it was, it was a country place. Our driveway was gravel, but it was like thick gravel, right? So the bike was really slow. My brother, my older brother, would get on the wheel horse, which is like a small tractor, and he would run it right up behind me with the blade going up and down, and then he would yell down at me, I'm gonna run over you, and I was terrified. That's a whole nother story. I wanna get back to the training wheels. We all start with training wheels. Greg LeMond started with training wheels, I can almost guarantee it. The bookmaker's equivalent of training wheels is a test book. So I'm gonna give you some advice about making a test book that I think will help you tremendously if you've never done this. Number one is relax. You have to relax about making test books. Stay with me here. Happy bookmaker, good bookmaker. Unhappy bookmaker, stressed bookmaker, not good bookmaker, right? Follow me there. Okay, so relax is the first point. Second point is you're the only person in the world who's gonna see it. You are the only person who's going to see it. Point number three, this is not a judgment of your photography, editing, sequencing, typography, or page layout. This is just a, a sample. So no one else is going to see it and it does not have to be perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect photo book to begin with, but your test book is the furthest thing from perfect you can possibly do. Now, points four and five are the meat of this. We just had the, the entree salad with ranch dressing. Now we're moving on to the ribs. We're moving on to what has a carcass attached to it. Point number four is you're gonna think small, soft cover, and inexpensive. Now, if you're looking at Blurb and you're saying, I'm interested in this platform and I think this might be something I'm gonna use over time, you're actually gonna make three test books, photo book, magazine, trade book. You're gonna make soft cover. Now magazine only comes in soft cover, but the other two have a hard cover option, but you're not gonna use those. You're gonna do soft cover only, and you're gonna do minimum page counts. So with photo book and magazine, that's 20 pages, and with trade book, that's 24. So you're gonna spend the least amount because you're gonna do the least amount of pages possible. That's where you start. Now, point number five is where we really get fun. What goes in the test book? So if you're a photographer, this is what you're gonna put in. You're gonna put black and white images. You're gonna to put toned black and white images. So you could be a warm tone person, a cold tone person, doesn't matter, because you're gonna put all three of them in there. You're gonna put neutral, cold, warm, and you're gonna put color. Again, doesn't matter what it looks like. Randomly throw them in there. The other thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take typefaces. You're gonna take different fonts that you think you want to use. And I would throw in exotic fonts, maybe like a distressed typewriter font, but I would also throw in like Helvetica, something simple, it's been around forever, tried and true. You're gonna take a single line of text, something like all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And you're gonna print that in eight point font, nine point, 10, 12, 14, 18, 24. And you're gonna print it in the trade book, in the magazine, in the photo book to see how those font sizes print. So if you need to write a caption or you need to write body copy or you need to do a knockout quote, you're gonna have an idea of which font size you want. One of the quickest ways to identify a self-published book in my experience is to look at typeface and to look at the size of the typefaces being used and the placement and things like that. It's a dead giveaway that someone is not sort of skilled in the bookmaking world when you see like a 14 point font where there should be an eight point font. That in a nutshell is how you make a test book, but there's one more wrinkle to this. You can order a swatch kit from Blurb and that's great. You get a swatch kit, they're very helpful, but the work in the swatch kit is not yours. So now that you've created these test book samples, what I would do is I would look at the swatch kit from Blurb and I would determine the two papers that you think are your favorites. Those are the ones that you really wanna print on. Then I would have your photo book printed on those paper types. With magazine, I would stick with premium paper because I think most of you are illustrated content. A lot of you are photographers and I think that's gonna be the best fit. And with trade book, I'm gonna simplify it for you. There are numerous paper types in trade books and they're all really interesting. But if you're a straight photographer and you're concerned about image quality and the best sort of quality paper for photography, I would go with standard color paper. That in a nutshell is how you do it. Once you get these beloved test books, you are gonna hold them, you can't see, it's off camera to the right or left or whatever direction we're looking in. I have a file cabinet and I keep my test books in there and every single time I make a book, I reference those test books. And that is the beauty of relaxing and making your first test book. Good luck and get her done.